Golly. Son of a gun, he knocked the fire out of it. Yeah, there's more there's more than one in here. <laughs> Man, he knocked the freaking fire out of it, dude. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Well, we've had a lot of questions about the wake baits, the six cents wake baits that I use, and uh, this, so this video is gonna just be answering y'all's questions, and it's gonna be everything, everything that I can remember to tell you. Uh, each video I have, I just have little pieces here and there um, at the beginning of the video. This video is gonna be probably pretty long, but it's gonna be every single thing you need to know that works for me using these wake baits the redfish and speckled trout freaking love them and there's uh there's a, a lot of little trick uh tricks and tips to uh, to the wake baits you can't just tie them on and um and and use them you know you have to you have to kind of know a few things so we're going to go over all those with you so these are what the packages look like for the six cents movement 80 wake baits um they do have saltwater addition and they have freshwater addition the only difference uh is the hooks the saltwater hooks are gonna uh last a little longer in salt water um but i use the i use the freshwater ones because they don't have all the colors you know in like this one the the dirty chartreuse one of my favorite colors with the saltwater hooks and some of the other colors only come with freshwater hooks but um but really the color to me is is not a huge deal i think what attracts them to these lures is the movement of the lure and the vibration that it puts off so i know that y'all see me using the the shad scales color here lately for uh for uh and i've caught trout and reds on this color but uh, I've caught them on all the colors and all and it, you know, it doesn't seem to make a huge deal Which color I pick they they like all of them and if you if you really want to get down to it Your realistic looking colors like this one or this one um, These are going to be for more for clear water and more for speckled trout even though I catch reds on the realistic colors, too the brighter colors the chartreuse or the pink the you know the brighter ones are going to be better for for redfish i haven't caught as many trout on these brighter colors i've always liked the realistic colors for trout uh, redfish they they don't seem to care man they just like that movement that that the lure produces the vibration in the water so so first question is the stock split rings this is a brand new lure and they come with these little split rings on the front uh, i do remove those i take them off and then um so once it is off so this is a lure that it has been taken off already you can't see the split ring i use the the spro clip and there's the information for you it's a split snap and it's a 90 pound so that's the size of it and that's it right there that's the clip and they go on there pretty easily without that stock split ring on the lure and then i use a 30 pound mono leader maybe 10 inches is is all you need and then i have a barrel swivel tied to the end the barrel swivel is a size five and i just use these eagle claw any brand will work it doesn't matter but um sometimes different brands of things their sizes are different so 
uh, if, those are the ones I use. And I use the monofilament leader to help prevent the, um, the hook from fouling up on the line. So what it'll do, here's a lure with all the hooks. <clears throat> a lot of times you cast and this lure will spin in the air and when it hits the water, uh, this leader will, or this hook will catch the leader and then it's a wasted cast. Uh, so the, the leader definitely helps because if you tie straight to braid, uh, the braid will foul over and over and over again. Really annoying. Like I said, it's a wasted cast. So, um, you don't want to waste a cast. You want to, you want to be fishing that lure every single cast. So, um, I did do some experiments today and to try to, uh, figure out another way to, to prevent them from fouling on the hooks. And my first experiment is taking the front hook off. And the reason why I think it's the front hook is because it, it's, it's always the front hook that I have to unravel uh, that leader from. I didn't, uh, I did have one hit today. So I tried that with a, just a single treble hook on the back. And then I tried a inline hook on the back and I had a real good hit. The rod was bent and then the fish was off. So uh, I've never been a, a firm believer in inline hooks. You know, that's just my opinion. I would rather use treble hooks if I can. The inline hooks are gonna be, if you're fishing in a lot of grass and you have no other choice. I have tried with two inline hooks on these wake baits, but they're so short that the that those two inline hooks end up hooking each other and if you have if you get a strike with those two hooks that are hooked to each other you're not you're not going to hook up so um i'm thinking this single treble hook in the back is plenty of hook to to hook them but like i said i'm still experimenting with that but i will say this uh with a couple hundred casts today it never fouled it never that that line never or the hook never hooked the line. So um, if you're having a, a lot of issues, you know, you could try it like this. I, I am going to commit myself to this for uh, for a couple more fishing trips because I think the treble hook will work. Also, to help it from fouling, uh, whenever you cast, right before it hits the water, I stop that lure. So it puts tension on that lure because if, if it lands on the water, with slack they'll foul up more too so basically short stop it right before it hits the water that also helps speed and retrieve um so i'm reeling them in real fast you know uh it's always worked good for me and especially um you know this time of year the only time that i'll actually put pauses in the lure will be in the winter time the rod tip is going to control the the depth of the lure these lures only go about 12 inches on average and uh for whatever reason some of them tend to tend to run real close to the surface and some of them will go about 12 inches and it has to do with with the bills on the front of them some of them are just a little bit different and it's the same exact lure um I've looked at the freshwater versus the saltwater version, and it seems like they kind of just, uh, they're just kind of mixed. <laughs> they're just kind of mixed in, you know? So uh, the ones that, that try to run closer to the surface, you have to keep the rod tip real low to the water. The lower the rod tip to the water, the deeper it will go. And basically the structure depends on how how low or high i want to run it if i'm running it over oysters that are you know 12 inches below the surface and i don't want to hook the oyster then i keep that rod tip pretty high and and a lot of times i start off on a long cast with the rod tip up and then as it gets closer to me i'm dropping the rod tip just a little bit as it's getting closer uh, and you'll see the wake of the lure and I like to be able to just barely see the wake I'm running it maybe about six or eight inches uh, on average and 
when that lure starts to come too much to the surface, I'm dropping my rod tip even more and keeping, <clears throat> keeping that lure down, you know, as much as I can. So I have had plenty of strikes on the surface. Golly. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I catch most of them about six, six to 12 inches below the surface. So, uh, the water depth that I fish these in, uh, I pretty much always fish shallow. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I fish deeper than three feet all year. So as long as you got, uh, you know, like I said, 12 inch, at least 12 inches of water, then your, uh, these lures work great. But if you're fishing 12 inches of water that has submerged grass, that's not going to be enough water to, to work them. You'll, you'll catch that grass. So if it's a grassy area, which I do fish a lot, it needs to be about two feet deep. That way the grass is about like this, and then you, and then you have about that much water on top of the grass and uh that's these lures work great for that too so so they do make a a movement 80x and it looks exactly the same as the movement 80 wake weight bait uh the difference between them the x will run one to three feet so if you're fishing a five foot grass flat or five feet deep then uh and you want it to run a little lower then then these would work great i do have a couple of them i haven't ever really tried them that much because i fish so shallow they will not you cannot get them to run shallow enough no matter how uh high your rod tip is so the wake baits are, are what i use always so we'll do a recap on realistic versus bright this is the realistic looking one on uh well it's on my left <laughs> And this is the uh, bright colored one. And like I said, those are, to me, the only two colors are realistic and bright. And you have so many shades in between that I don't care. I don't, I don't really care about the in-between. You know, they, they all work. You know, this is an in-between color. This one's getting on the bright side, though. So, but, so something like this, and I don't know the name of the color on this one. I just looked and I couldn't find it. Um, something like this would be a good all around. But these two here, uh, the Shad Scales, this one here is a Shad Scales. And this one is a Shad Craft. They're, they, to me, they look, they look really realistic. And, and I've caught tons of fish on both of them. I've caught Reds and Trout. And then, you know, this is your, your brighter one, so... The brighter colors, like I said, um, I do tend to use more of the brighter colors in the marsh when the water's dirty. <clears throat> um, but I, you know, don't don't worry about the color. Just uh, just go with some colors that you think look good for to you, and the fish won't the fish won't care. I've caught them on all of them, so I hope some of these tips were helpful. Thanks for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. There you go. There you go. Oh yeah. First cast on a wig bait. Oh man, he's nice. Oh, it's gonna be a good trap. It's gonna be a good trap. There you go. Golly. <laughs> man, that's a nice one. He hit that wig bait. Golly. He hit that wig bait on the first freaking cast. Man, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Didn't get it in the mouth, but... Golly. Come on, big old girl. <laughs> it's gotta be about 22. Man, she's fat, too. 